Welcome to another edition of Finish First Cycle Breakers. We are here to improve your life. And like I said, I don't take this lightly that I have your attention and I don't choose to waste your time. So I'm gonna give you as much information as I can as quickly and as succinctly as possible because I don't wanna waste your time, but I wanna give you tools that can take your life to the next level. And remember, I'm a judge, but not only am I a judge, I'm a man, I'm a human being. I make mistakes, but what I do is I try to analyze and learn from my mistakes so that I can take my life to the next level and I wanna do the same thing for you. So it doesn't matter if you are in a bad relationship, if you are in a bad job situation, it doesn't matter if you're on probation, whatever the situation is, there are tools and techniques to take you to your best life. And that's what we're here to do. So let's go. So we're making our way through a book called The Cycle Breaker. Excuse my little note here. I wrote this book because I wanted to give tools and techniques of how to break cycles. If you know anything about what I do here at the court, you know my mission is to be a cycle breaker. But more important than just me being a cycle breaker is creating tools so that you can break any cycle in your life. And again, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's something personal. Maybe you want to stop smoking. It could be simple, something as simple as that. Or maybe it's the criminal behavior that you've been involved in because of your environment or because of your exposure. It takes tools and techniques to break cycles. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, remember, there are four elements of a cycle breaker even before we get to the book. The first one is recognizing the need to break the cycle. you have to recognize that there is something in your life that needs to change. And like I said, you know that better than anybody else. But if you don't know it, one thing that you can do is ask someone who's close to you, someone who you trust. Say, what do you think about X, Y, and Z? Or what's your impression of me when I blank? They will give you the raw truth. And then if you don't then understand what the cycle is, Again, you can go intro, introspective and look at yourself and figure out what is it about my life that I need to change. So those are two ways to identify the cycle. First, ask somebody. If you care about them, if they care about you, they'll give you an honest answer, hopefully. And then second, take some time to yourself and look at your life. Look at where you are and figure out what is it that I need to change so that I'm not constantly bumping my head up against the same wall. That's how you identify the cycle. The second thing is then you have to commit to breaking the cycle. See, it's not enough just to know what you need to do. You then have to decide to do it. And committing is very hard. I mean, think about it. We hear all the time that people have commitment issues. And it's not just about breaking cycles. It's in life. It is hard to step outside of the box and commit to things that will improve your life, but that's what we need to do. So commit to breaking the cycle. Commit to living your best life. Commit to taking your life to the next level. Why not? Our time here is short. You're not gonna live forever, so why not live the best life, the best positive life that you can while you're here? So commit to breaking the cycle. And then you have to get the tools necessary to break the cycle. You know, there was some reading I did the other day and we talked about, and this is a small group I had, and we talked about the right to know and the right to live your best life. But the only way that you get to that stage is by having your tools in order, your ducks in a row. You have to be ready for the opportunities that you want. It's not enough to say that, you know, you want to be a great basketball player, but you won't practice basketball. It's not enough to say that you don't want to wind up in jail again, but you keep breaking the law or you want to be in a great relationship, but you keep picking the same person and dating the same person over and over again. You have to get the tools so that you know how to break the cycle. So that's the next step.
And then finally, you have to stay in the game when it gets hard. Life is gonna happen. People will let you down. Situations will let you down. Life will get hard. But if you know the cycle that you wanna break and you know that you've made the commitment and you began to get the tools, just don't quit. Why? As long as you are breathing, you have an opportunity to break the cycle. So don't quit no matter what. All right, so let's go back to the book. Now, in this part of the cycle breaker, we're talking about the theory called the VCR of how you can be successful. The V was vision and the C is choices. Now, why do I use the term VCR? Because we are busy as people and the shorter that we can condense something so that you can remember it, that's how you use it as a tool. You'll always remember, what was that the judge was saying? Oh yeah, VCR, VCR. And then you'll remember that it's visions and choices as part of the VCR that you need to be successful. So let's talk about choices. So in the cycle breaker, chapter 21, the young men are together in their quarters and it's after a long day of challenging material mentally and physically where they're trying to figure out how do they live this thing called their best life? How do they make choices that will take them to the next level? So they're struggling with that because we all struggle with it. And as the young men are in their cabin together, one of the young men, he starts to talk about breaking away, getting out of this program, leaving. How many times in your life have you wanted to quit? How many times in your life have you heard somebody talk about just giving up? This is too hard for me. I can't stop smoking. I can't leave this relationship. I'll never get off probation. How many times have you heard people talk like that? And that's when it gets hard because your mind will play tricks on you. It's a powerful thing. Your mind is so powerful that it can change your life to the positive or the negative. But at the same time, you have to control your mind. There is a person, there is a soul that is part of you, but also outside of your mind. You can control your mind if you step away from it. So that's where the theory of choices come in because you're gonna always be hit with the negative side of life. We're just programmed that way. We have positives and we have negatives. We're gonna have positive choices always available to us and then we'll have the negative option too. So when you're thinking about quitting like the young man in this book in chapter 21, you have to decide, look, am I gonna listen to that negative voice? And more importantly, are the people around me are they supporting this bad choice or are they encouraging me to make a good choice? Take stock of the people who are around you right now. How many people do you have that's in your circle? Why don't you number them? Take a stock right now. Number the people in your circle. Make a list. How many people are in your close circle? And then circle the ones who are negative. Always have something bad to say. Always encouraging you to do the wrong thing. And then that circle draw a line through them because those are the people that you need to eliminate from your life. And I don't care if you're left with just one person after that, or maybe you're left with nobody. And if you're left with nobody, that means you just need a new group of friends. So when we're talking about choices, just like these young men, they're in the cabin, they're talking about it. And now the question is, what's going to happen? So today I want to I want to focus on giving up because that's what we're talking about in chapter 21, where these young men were at a crossroads because of the environment, because of the struggle, because of the difficulty. They had to deal with the thought of giving up. And like I said, you've thought about giving up before. I've thought about giving up before. Let me share a story with you. When I was a young attorney, um, you know, aggressive, wanting to get it, you know, wanting to make a lot of money, wanting to be successful. Uh, first, I worked for a firm, and then at some point, I decided to go on my own, which is risky 
because you never know what's gonna happen when you go on your own. In fact, it's like starting all over. So I decided to go out on my own, but what I did was I made some calls and connections to people who could give me a little helping hand along the way. So before I went out on my own as an attorney leaving the firm, I had a few cases already lined up. Now that's great, but what I didn't realize is that in the midst of those cases, you have some messy cases and you have some great cases. So I love the great cases because they gave me an opportunity to make money and to learn how to be a good attorney, but it was the messy cases that ended up being the problem in my situation and in my life. So to make a long story short, I worked as an attorney on my own, but those bad cases that I inherited from somebody else continued to be there. They continued to haunt me. That is a lesson in and of itself. When you are in a situation and you know something is bad for you, you know that person shouldn't be in your life, you need to be willing to eliminate that person from your life. It will be hard. It will take courage, but it will continue to be there with the possibility of sabotaging your entire future because the bad stuff just don't go away, but you can move away from the bad stuff. So here I am practicing law, making my own path, but I knew all along that there were some bad cases and eventually they caught up with me. And what happened? The bad cases got worse and worse and worse. And to fast forward, it ended up in me actually losing my license. Now think about it. Here you are, I'm Judge Dawson. You see me on you know, this YouTube video. You see me in court. I'm doing things with my foundation. You know, I'm a, I'm a yogi, all these great things. But yeah, there was a time where I actually lost my license to practice law based on some mess that I didn't clear up and I didn't clean up. Now keep in mind, I didn't create the mess and many times you won't create the mess, but that doesn't mean that mess isn't there and it's gonna stop you. So here I was, a young attorney, aggressive, arrogant, you know, thinking that I was the best and all of a sudden everything was stripped from me. I mean everything. It was simply a matter of a moment. I got a call and that call was judge, well it wasn't judge at the time, that call said, Attorney Dawson, stop what you're doing. You are no longer licensed. Can you imagine the devastation that I felt? Can you imagine the way that broke my heart? All the work that I did, all the people that I worked hard for, all the people that I tried to help move to the next level, and here I was in a situation with nothing. And let me tell you the worst of it. All of the people who I thought were my friends, they weren't there for me. There were a select few of people that I could call on. But for the most part, to be honest with you, all the people who were there as I rode to the top, all the people who claimed they cared about me, all the people who knew me from my past, they weren't there. Now, do I hold that against them now? No, nah, because that's not me. But just to be honest with you, when you fall down, there's a good chance that the people who claim they are in your corner, the people who claim they are here for you, they won't be there for you. So that's gonna add to the despair that you have. So. Here I am, suspended, nobody to call on. I have a family to take care of and no way to make money. It was bad. So how does that relate to what we're talking about? We're talking about giving up. Do you think at that moment I didn't want to give up? That I wasn't depressed? That sometimes it was actually hard to get out the bed in the morning because I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from. I didn't know how I was going to make money. But I had to shake it off real quick and realize that I was not going to give up. And the people who played a part in my downfall and prayed for my downfall, I had to show them. So I put that jacket on I said, you know what? I'm gonna show these people that I can get back on my feet. Even though I have friends who turn their back on me, even though there are people who don't even believe in me anymore, I was gonna show them. So that's what we're talking about right here. When you're talking about choices, the first thing I want you to consider with your choices is the choice to never give up. Has there been a time in your life where you thought about giving up? So here are some keys 
to not giving up. Some keys to keep going when things get rough. One is take a step back, take a deep breath and relax. Because as long as you are living, as long as you are alive, you are still in the game. The second step is write it out. Carefully analyze where you are right now. How much money do you have in the bank? What relationship just left? Who's on your team? Who's not on your team? Write it out so you know exactly where you are. There are no questions about it. There's no mystery. You know exactly where you are. Number three, write out exactly where you need to go. So what are the goals? Okay, I'm stuck in a situation. I just got evicted. Where do you need to go? Oh, I need a place to live. So that's the goal. You wrote out where you were or where you are, and then you documented where you want to go. And then the next thing is to create the steps. What are the steps between where you are and where you want to be? Write those steps out and then get to work. Flat out, get to work. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't sit there depressed. Don't call your friends to cry about it and get their opinion. Get to work. When things are down for you and you need to get back on your feet, like I said, the first step, take a deep breath. Relax because you're still alive and you're still in the game. The next step, write out exactly where you are. What is your current situation? What's holding you back? What's got you down? And then the next one is right where you need to be and where you want to be. What are your goals? And then... Map it out. What do you need to do to get from A to Z? How do you get from where you are to where you want to be? And then get to work. It's flat out, get to work. Don't waste any time. Because like I said before, we're not here that long. But while we're here, we can make the best of it. So let's do that. Let's go.